Hi all, I have another absolutely fascinating game to show you today. Leela ID 61068, playing against Stockfish 10. It's a game created by DCAP on a fast and furious 3 minutes with a 2 second increment time control. The opening to explore is in the Vienna game and this knight f6 bishop c4 inviting the Frankenstein Dracula variation. So this is one of the most interesting uh, tactical openings uh, in chess. So knight b5 here trying to distract uh, the defense of f7. Leela playing white, just to remind you. So we have g6, queen f3, all book so far, queen d5, renewing knight takes d6, check as a threat for queen f7 mating. Black sacrifices the exchange here with queen e7, so this is all known theory. Knight takes c7, king d8, knight takes a8, and here we reach the end of the book, given to them both. Stockfish 10, elects for b6. So it's clear that actually this diagonal could be very useful to black, that bishop on the diagonal, and there's lots of targets here which are quite sensitive. We have queen d3 by the bishop b7. Now taking on b6 here, a takes, knight e2, and then we have f4. This seems to be a very ambitious and logical plan from black. Let's play f4 here. White castles, is this really dangerous? g5. Something factually about black's g5 and the pawns on dark squares in particular is that the corresponding light squares are weakened here. And even h5 in a way, if a piece lands on h5, it's less likely to be kicked, of course, because pawns don't go backwards. So there are fundamental aspects, default aspects, you could say, of black's position, which maybe white can tap into as kind of uh, downsides. But uh, this next move might, uh, you, you might find quite surprising. And the move is actually queen f3. Now, one of the intentions is to park the queen, believe it or not, on h5. If the queen's parked on h5, because the bishop's looking at g8, what is actually the issue then facing for white? That does seem a really nice parking spot here. Uh, so in the game, knight d4 was played. But let's explore for a moment. Uh, what if h5 is played? What's, uh, what is white going to do here? Uh, taking away that nice parking space. White can potentially play bishop d5 here it seems. And for example, g4, there's queen b3. And this position, taking on b6, taking on a5, is winning for white. Uh, let's have a look at this. Knight d4 instead. Knight takes d4 as possible here. On g4, queen b3. And again, that's absolutely brilliant for white. So it seems as though queen f3, yeah, it's going to go to h5, but let's have one more try at causing some chaos here. g4 from black. Doesn't this uh, put a spanner in the works for the queen's pesky movements? Queen takes h5, queen h3. f3 looks really dangerous. It turns out here queen takes f3 as possible. On knight d4, knight takes d4. This queen sacrifice, uh, however, is only leading to equality, it seems, in this example. There's a better way to play this. So hang on a sec. After queen, instead of queen takes f3, let the pawn do its damage with knight c3. So let's say knight d4 for a moment, g3. And this is actually okay for white, believe it or not. White can play d4 and liberate the position and sort out a lot of the issues. White's actually threatening to play d5 on queen f3, for example, and stop any dangers there. And on ed, there's access for bishop f4. So that should be OK for white. So yes, very, very interesting lines here are, are resulting from this intention to go to h5. So black's choice knight d4, though. We have here queen h5, so parking there for the moment. If Queen g4, yes, that's sort of asking for h5. And here, this is a disaster, just losing the knight for nothing. So queen h5, keeping an eye, protecting e2 is vital here, of course, as you might expect. 
so we have bishop takes g2 a nice tactic it seems uh, so wanting this fork uh, now before looking at that one if knight takes e2 and f3 this looks dangerous queen e3 seems to be okay for white accepting f takes g2 this position seems to be white's in control uh, let's have a quick look again uh, instead uh, of that's g4 here so queen h5 let's have a look at uh, the move g4 instead of bishop takes g2 trying to cause some trouble you know maybe potentially use the g file in some way it seems knight takes d4 because that did disconnect the queen for the knight this possession with d3 here you can see white's actually able to gobble the g4 pawn without too much penalty and in fact undermining a lot of uh, the king side here black pawns are totally fragmented white's actually got a huge advantage there so bishop takes g2 was the tactical choice of stockfish 10. we have knight takes d4 which offers an exchange sacrifice so a counter exchange sacrifice because uh, white won a whole rook but then lost the knight so that was kind of winning the exchange and now losing the exchange but what's the outcome here if we look at actual outcome of all this after king takes e takes takes stock here positionally it seems as though white's got very nice light square blockade potential with the bishop without a counterpart the queen sitting on a nice h5 square really so these pawns are constrained and prone to undermining later maybe with h4 and d3 on this side of the board there's also this default rook uh, you know the facts of the position the defaults are very interesting to consider that factually that default rook you know can be activated just with a4 a5 so one of black's priorities might also to do uh, a sort of block a file here as well as be conscious of the undermining potential of these pawns so yes white stands here in good shape not uh, material up given back the material and black has more pawn islands as well whites okay white's got three pawn islands though these these are separated out uh, but structurally this does not look entirely great black's structure there in particular we have d3 queen f6 and now a4 exploiting that default rook which is factually being activated just by pushing the a pawn black sets up a blockade with knight b7 we have bishop d3 bishop sorry bishop b3 to d5 knight a5 okay if uh, just to show the potential here if knight d6 a5 is ripping through this can't be acceptable for black this kind of scenario with that a file is really nice and horrible things start happening after on d7 so threatening actually queen g4 here so black has to get ready to protect d7 it's 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 ridiculous and in fact there's even a rook sack in this line uh, if it, this fictional line it's very very dangerous and here if uh, queen a6 then b4 check queen takes so there's a lot of dangers if white's allowed to rip through that a file so knight a5 bishop d2 we have h6 b4 knight c6 b5 and it's difficult for black black plays uh, a tactical move bishop b4 counter-attacking the bishop on d2 uh, if the knight moved to a5 instead it seems you know the knight's misplaced really bishop h1 is a fine looking move that knight's stretched out like on a torture rack uh, knight on the rim is dim and actually you know if black has to play a move like this because queen f3 is coming to go into a8 maybe uh, this this looks as though white's back to undermining this structure over here with h4 and just gets a fantastic position uh, with a lot of potential like this for example massive advantage uh, if we look at this again with knight b4 instead the knight actually can get stranded here after bishop b3 for example with a5 and then rook a4 the knight's actually stranded so that's not very good and after the queen's come off yeah if the knight has to sacrifice itself here it's being lost that's thanks very much peace up so we have bishop b4 b takes c6 bishop takes d2 rook b1 so simplification bishop a5 if d takes c6 here 
Now the rook takes b6, nicely pins that c pawn in time. And this position is just delicious for white, extinguishing and free there, that's no problem as well. So bishop a a5, keeping uh, the fortress tight as possible. Okay, we have c takes d7. White's doing a lot of damage on the light squares really. f3, black offering this pawn. If it isn't, say rook f8, then the bishop can use that f3 square. And for example, this position with rook b5, and then h4 here, really trying to wreck this structure, undermine it at g5, the exploitable base. And this is just delicious for white. This kind of attack, winning, um, that weakens f4. So f4 is going to be uh, vulnerable. Or d4, this is just a dominating position for white. Okay, so we'll go back to uh, this position, f3 being played. Uh, we have now that just been taken. It looks rather desperate, rook f8. Okay, the bishop can't move without queen takes f2, so the king moves. King takes d7. Uh, it's a tricky position. You might wonder, is it really essential to take the pawn now? Let's say bishop c3, the rook can go to b5, threatening things like h4 potentially. Uh, or here, let's just look at something else for a moment. Uh, this this kind of situation is just sitting on the position and protecting the pawn. So yeah, the pawn really does need to be taken, it seems. Uh, it is taken, so king takes d7, check, queen e4 check, and taking out this center pawn. So all of a sudden, we've got a situation, yeah, white's going to have more central pawns than black. Rook f4, check, queen d4, rook f4, queen e3. So once in the exchange of queens, this end game, it's opposite colored bishops, but white does have great prospects here because of the central pawns. We have bishop e4, rook b4. If uh, h5 is an alternative, then rook b5, and look, slicing at these pawns, uh, that will be very nice, protecting e3 just in time, and picking that up, big advantage. So rook b4, rook takes, bishop takes, bishop f3. Surely you think black might have some drawing chances here. Mm, very tricky, d4, king f2, king e2, uh, h3, keeping the king out of e4 with that bishop is important here, and stopping g4 from black as well. So say d5, this would be a disaster on both counts of g4 and black would be equal there totally so if white has to win white if white wants to win this total accuracy needed h3 bishop d8 pawns being kept away from the color of uh, this bishop king d3 b4 check king g6 king c4 h5 bishop f3 another desperate looking pawn sack g4 uh, just to show now the horror of black's position if h4 bishop g4 this bishop is just a watchman over these two pawns and these two pawns are now free to just push through for example like this would be a nightmare for black with just spectator pawns basically blockaded so yes it's getting rather desperate it's thrown away like balanced so g4 that pawn is taken and yes it looks as though the king's been stopped from key squares getting to key squares which might help in some way uh, for resistance but uh, so king d5 king e5 now uh, also actually it's so winning this position now e4 was possible with e5 that's that's possible as well so king e5 though bishop f6 king d5 and now e4 so we get this situation where this is just a spectator pawn it's white pawns that are liberated and can push through now so leader super duper with pawns as usual crashing through in the end with these central pawns so what did we see from this game some key points from my perspective uh, it shows a way of a very interesting way of navigating it seems against the whole exchange sack concept of the frankenstein dracula with a, a remarkably brave looking queen f3 with the idea of perching on h5 which seems to exploit what i'd call the facts and the defaults of the position that the pawns are on dark squares and factually h5 looked like a, a nice blockade square from a logical point of view 
for, from actual visual point of view, it's difficult um, to uh, attack that queen there. And it's also continually putting pressure on black's pawn chain at h5. So I thought that was rather interesting, this bounce fight f3 to h5. So giving back the exchange, it seems as though white was strong then on the light squares generally. The, the light square bishop without the counterpart. Uh, and in the end games, it seems the central pawns arose uh, to be really powerful with black's pawns just blockaded and kind of spectator pawns basically. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this. If you want to navigate some of the uh, interesting resources and ideas and train on this amazing variation, the Frankenstein Dracula, there's a free course there at Chessable Interactive Course, Kings Crusher TV slash Dracula if you want to check out some amazing variations and ideas. So this is uh, one of many. In that course you'll see ideas for both sides. So it's really uh, an interesting variation just to sort of see the nature of chess, how violent and resourceful it can be for both sides of this particular opening. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks very much.